Okay, so um, now we've got to put some decorative chamfers uh, onto the plain body. Uh, as you can see, I've already done it on this side here. Uh, so I've cut a stop here with a gouge or my round, half round file. Put an uh, even chamfer all the way around here and stop the end here. So uh, this is how I did it. So first of all, I marked out my chamfer and uh, from the top of the plane down, I marked nine millimeters, uh, same here, nine, all the way around down here. And on the side here, I marked uh, three millimeters down from the side, uh, traced around all again. And um, so all I did was basically take a bunch of shavings with the plane, block plane, until I hit both lines. Uh, and that was for this top chamfer. And for these uh, two ends here, basically I've got a half round float here, the Iwasaki one again, extra fine. And I lined it up uh, with my mark and just kind of took a, a half round gouge out here. If you have a gouge, you can use a gouge. And I think that's how they actually did it. Uh, back in the old days, but I don't have a gouge, so I'm, I'm using this file. And you can see, uh, basically, I'm checking so that this kind of dip here starts uh, or ends on both sides at my lines, and you just keep going almost there. One more. about there. And uh, to do the rest of the chamfer, I got my float again, Iwasaki flat, uh, and I just hopped off this material. lines again. Um, if you just keep checking it should, it should go pretty easy. You can do this with a chisel as well but um, I find this actually a bit easier to control and uh, it gives better results. Okay, I'm getting there now. Um, it's about right. I'm just concentrating on keeping this horizontal uh, so I don't get any kind of uneven steps and I don't want to cut into this bit here so with those two points in mind I'm just kind of basically keeping this area flat and uh, going down to the lines and I'm just about there and that's pretty much it so you just basically do that and uh, make these jumpers. Um, this is kind of decorative, I think, but I, I like the look of them and they're not really hard to do, so I'm doing it. So there we go. So now we've got to uh, make the wedge. Uh, this is the last kind of thing we need to make uh, before we can take some actual wheel shavings. Um, so I've got this piece of beach here. Uh, it's about 15 millimeters thick by maybe 17, 18, centimeters long um, by the width of your actual uh, throat. So this fits in with a tiny bit of wheel room. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it uh, too tight. Um, but uh, you can see here I've marked a 10 degree slope from the tip up and uh, this is the kind of angle I kind of well calculated my wage to be when I cut out the throat. 
um, this isn't going to be your final angle because uh, you'll have to actually put your blade in and uh, put the wedge in and kind of fine tune it later but this is a good rough guide here so all I'm going to do is just clamp it up and um, uh, kind of get going with the block line basically Here I've got my uh, wedge done now, uh, just the slope, and uh, I've got the blade in and the wedge. And what you're aiming for is I don't know if you can actually see, but you want a tight seam all the way along the abutment here on both sides. And um, if I take the wedge out, it should be quite tight uh, without like kind of smacking it in with a hammer. And uh, this is what it looks like. You can see I actually didn't go all the way down to the line because I didn't need to. Uh, because you'll be uh, cutting this kind of end off here anyway so that you don't get a really sharp edge here and uh, so this is your finished wedge so well not quite finished yet but uh, for the, the slope here uh, so the next thing you want to do is you get the blade uh, wedge in place get a pencil and just kind of trace trace along the abutment um, and up on both sides with a pencil and get the wedge back out and this is the kind of shape you'll have so <laughs> this is um, kind of waste area so you want to get a square and uh, you want to mark across the top and um, basically this will be a start of a slope down and I'm just going to mark a little bit further down here arbitrary kind of line maybe right here and um, here you can see the kind of my basic wedge shape. So I've got the two abutments here. These these are what will go against the abutments. Uh, this is where you kind of shaved at an angle to open up the mouth. And so you want this kind of bit here. And uh, this area here will all be chopped out. Uh, so we'll be sawing down to here, chopping that out. And this here will be sloped. Uh, using a chisel uh, so that it provides smooth escape for the for the shavings and um, up here well this is kind of up to you basically the shape uh, the shape of the wedge here traditionally it's a kind of uh, kind of coffin type shape like this uh, with some kind of chamfers and stuff that's probably the shape I'll be doing but it's up to you uh, you can leave it square or round it off or whatever um, so that's up to you, personal preference. But this here, um, this is what we'll be shaping next. And basically, all you do is you cut this section out and uh, kind of chisel that down to a, a kind of sharp point, sharpish point at the end uh, to provide a smooth exit. And so I'll, I'll do that and I'll get back to you with the final uh, wedge. So I've uh, finished up the plane now. Uh, Trued up the sole so it's uh, nice and flat. I've got a pretty tight mouth, even though it's a jack. Um, it's so that, um, well, I'm not going to be taking huge shavings with this. I don't plan to anyway, and uh, so I want a, a tight-ish mouth. It's not, it's not really tight. It's not as tight as uh, it kind of finely tuned smoother, but it's it's pretty tight, and um, maybe uh, I don't know, 0.34 millimeters. I might open up a little bit more depending on how uh, thick I want to take the sha shavings later but for now I'm going to leave it like this and uh, um, you know leave it but um, it's finished wedge is in uh, irons in you can see it's all you know fitted and everything and I've just been taking some test shavings with this walnut and this is what it 
can do. You can see. Easy to push. Very fine shavings. You could probably use this as a smoother. It's got 50, 50 degree bend angle. See, yeah, it's so it's pretty nice. It works great. Um, oh, I guess I'll just show you the, the wedge. Uh, this is the wedge. Um, hang on. So here you can see I've um, shaped this middle section here into a kind of slope. It's so that when it when it sits on the blade here like this, um, you know the the shavings don't get jammed under or anything, and it can just flow straight out. Um, you can see here as well. I've curved the very tips of these uh, points here is so that when the corner of the blade, well, obviously it cuts, and when the shavings flow out, they won't kind of get caught. They'll just kind of slip past, hopefully. Um, so that's the wedge. It's, um, you know, pretty simple to make. And, you know, you can make make them again if you fail or whatever and stuff. But the important thing is, is you want to get it um, kind of a tight fit. This is the fit I've got. So I put the weight iron in and I can drop it in, uh, give it a light tap and that's tight. I can't, you know, it's not coming out. So that's the kind of fit you're looking for. Uh, just some light taps and um, the wedge will seat perfect. Um, some tips to get the wedge fitting nicely is, um, well you can use some carbon paper uh, kind of to see where the contact points are for the actual uh, kind of wedge abutments here. Also you want to check the seating of your iron to your bed. Again carbon paper or you can use some graphite or something uh, and just kind of pare that down and make sure it's uh, a nice clean contact surface you have. And also the wedge to your iron contact surface. You want to get that nice and uh, kind of even as well. Um, the more contact surface you have, obviously, the stronger the grip of your wedge. Um, so you want to take time to tune that. Um, to flatten the sole, all I did was basically just take a, a plane again and just flatten that out. Um, I'm not sure how flat this has to be, but it's definitely flat enough because it works. <laughs> um, and again, yeah, just, you know, uh, the last thing to do is apply a finish. Uh, the finish I'm going to be doing is um, just basic uh, boiled linseed oil, um, just kind of wipe that on, you know, give it a few coats. Uh, might put some wax on later, but wax I found can tend to stick if you put it on the sole, so I, I might not wax the sole. But um, yeah, so it's done, and it's a nicely working tool, and you know, relatively cheap to make, easy to make. So hope you enjoy making yours and get some good use out of it.